You have to constantly be evolving. You have to be your biggest critic and know it's genuine. Too many times we look for feedback and criticism from everybody else when the most important person that should be giving us that information is ourselves. What's up, everybody, and thank you for tuning in today for our interview with Tim Grover. Now, we drop great content each and every week, and we want to make sure that you guys get notified. So make sure you smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. And if you're looking for more videos on leadership, you can find them right there. Or high performance, you can find them right there. And if there are topics you would like us to discuss on this show, make sure you put them in the comments and give us a like and share our videos with your friends. I break individuals down into three different, three different categories. We have the people that compete and there's individuals that compete. We all know how to compete. We compete every single day at, at, at something. All right. And a lot of people that compete at things, their win is to finish. They just want to finish whatever they're, whatever they're doing. To me, if you're going to compete at something and you're going to finish it, make sure it leads to a win. It might not be a win in that particular area. It could be a win in something else. You know, people always love to run marathons. And unless you're the elite, elite marathon, the chances of you, no matter how much training you have, to go into any marathon and win the marathon is not going to happen. It's just, it's just not. But your mindset is to finish. So when you finish, what does that finish lead to a win in something else? Then you have the other individuals that win once. And we all know those individuals. We all know those individuals. They tell you about that one win that happened 20 years, that happened 20 year, 20 years ago, and they tell it to you over and over again. And we're so polite that we don't want to tell them, yeah, we, you just told us that story last year, the year before, and the year before that, and, and, and those people are just satisfied with, one that, with that one glorious win. Then you have people that win at winning. Those are the people that know that every time they win at something, there's another start line there. And how do you get to that place? It's actually done through failure and losing. Because like you said, you're going to miss more shots. You're going to lose more than you're going to win. You're going to fail more than you're going to, going to win. But the one thing I learned and I teach these individuals is, you know, when people say when you fail and you lose, you need to, you know, you need to stand right back up because if you stay down, it's a sign of weakness. I totally disagree with that. If you get knocked down and you fail, stay down there for a second. Maybe stay down there for a minute. Stay down there for a day. Understand why you got knocked down, why you failed. All right, because when you stand back up, if you jump right back up, you're gonna get knocked down again because you're standing up the same person. So once you fail, you stand up. Understand why you got knocked down because when you stand up, you have to be different. So you, not, you, get, you fail and you fall, you stand up, you have to be smarter. You fail and you fall, you have to stand up, you have to be stronger. You fail and you fall, you stand up, you have to be more resilient. So with each failure, if you stand up differently and not the same, it brings you closer to that win instead of farther away from it. Because you can't stand up the same individual. And I've always noticed through all my all my career with my athletes, with the business people I, I work with, is every failure, every loss is made that has brought them closer to that ultimate win for whatever they're looking for. And for like you said, most people, it creates doubt, it creates self-doubt. It says, oh, I didn't do this right. I don't want to go through this again. You know, winning it, it, it's not about the glamour. It's about, it's about the challenges, it's about the obstacle, it's about the pain you go through to have that win briefly. I mean, look at, I, I'm pretty sure you guys are, this isn't your first podcast. <laughs> yeah. It is not, you know, you, thank you. Yes, you're, you're, yes you're, very, you're, you're very well known in this industry. You guys are very su successful. But after every podcast, that you guys do, that's your win. 
But then the next, it starts all over with the next one. It starts all over with the next one. It starts all over with the, all, all over with the next one. And with each one, everybody will look at it and say, oh, man, that podcast was absolutely perfect. It was, uh, you know, the lighting was great. The sound was good. Your guest was unbelievable. And then you two will review it and be like, no, nah, this wasn't right. This wasn't right. This wasn't right. That, yeah. And those are and those are your failures, even though everybody else sees it as a success, because the next time it has to continue to improve. It has to continue to improve. Tim, I want to make a comment about that remark right there. It is so true for AJ and I, to the detriment of our of our own promotion. And, and let me give you an example. In this world, with all the social media that's going on, it is incredibly difficult to feed these algorithms with fresh content every day and make it miraculous and make it special. And, and so the idea is to repurpose old content. And if we are people who are trying to get better on a daily basis, do you think that I want to be promoting content from a year ago? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I can tell you, and we have this problem where we're on one level, we know that we hit the points and it was good and it's all there. But, but on a logical right now level, it's like, I'd rather just do it all over again to bring in more because I can, there's going to be more excitement or we, we know this, yes. even this concept even better now, or uh, because of the way I'm viewing it, I know I could just get it across in a bit much better than where I was a year ago. It is, you know, you, you, you guys will ask a question. You think you've nailed all the questions and then you'll be like, shoot, that's, I forgot to ask that one question I should have asked them that I should have asked that one question or just something wasn't right but that's what that's that's what winners do they're constantly looking to get better because if you don't after if you re, if you remain the same that'll be your only win everybody that's won at something repeatedly they've never come back the same they've come back better they've come back different with each if you come back exactly the same you you're not going to you're not going to win again we drop great content each and every week and we want to make sure that you guys get notified and in order to do that you're going to have to smash that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and if you've gotten a lot of value out of this make sure you give us a like and share our videos with your friends you have to constantly be evolving you have to be your biggest critic you have to understand Understand. You have to give yourself feedback and criticism and know it's genuine. And too many times we look for feedback and criticism from everybody else when the most important person that should be giving us that information is ourselves. Those are our wins. You hold yourself to a higher standard than everybody else will. I love how people come up and this, I know this happens to you guys all, all, all the time. People are, you know, when something doesn't go right, they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Are you guys settling for okay? Winners don't settle for okay. And it's usually when somebody tells you it's gonna be okay, that's the answer, that's all you got for me? It's gonna be okay? That's, how is that gonna solve the problem? We don't settle for okay. We don't settle for fine. We don't do that. Winners don't do that. They speak a completely different language. What was it in your drive that allowed you to continuously be a few steps ahead of these relentless people in order to continue to help them change? And I'm sure in and in all that time and, and the goals that were set out and the level of competition that everyone was in, uh, there's got the, the highs and lows and the, the relationship there had to have been built to such a degree to withstand a lot of those challenges. Yes, so what the way I stayed ahead of everybody so when you guys first started this podcast, all right, I'm sure you studied a lot of individuals, you read books, you did your research, you did all the things that, that, that you were supposed to do. And that's the ability of what to, what to think. You sit down, you, you look at something, you read an article, you read a piece of paper, you read something uh, on your phone, you do the research that tells you, 
these are this is how you do th- this is how you do things. I had the ability not only to do what to think, but how to think. All right, and how to think is instinctive between each individual. So while everybody was saying this is this is the manual to train a athlete, and I looked at it, I was like, I agree with some of this stuff, but I know there's a be- there's a better way. There's a better way to do these things. So I incorporated a lot of my knowledge and the stuff that I had no basis on. There was no research, no thing that said, hey, this is the way to do it. But I just knew it was right. It just made sense to me. It just made sense. So having the ability of how to think along with what to think really, really made a difference in how I was able to keep up with these athletes, how was I was able to go beyond what they what they were expecting of me, how I was able to evolve and do stuff that everybody ha- hadn't seen. I mean, we were doing when I used to train these athletes on a regular basis. You know, if you go work out and everybody, let's I'm gonna just use a bench press as an example because everybody knows what a bench press exercise is. You know, you put the equal weights on both sides of the bar. All right, and I was just like, well, you know what? He's right hand dominant. This is what he has a tendency to do. This is what goes on the le- left hand. I need to strengthen one side more than more than the other, and I need to be able to create this of uh, this balance in it. So I would lower more weight on one side and less on the other, and I would explain to him. I said, hey, listen, you, you got to trust me on this. You got you got to tr- you got to trust me on this, and I would explain to him you know, what my reasoning was behind this. And he hired me to do a job. He trusted me, he saw the results. And then literally 10 years later, other people were incorporating that kind of training method into these into these individuals. So what makes you so unique and so successful is, yeah, you know what the foundation and fundamental principles are to have a good podcast, but in order for it to be a successful, extraordinary pro- uh, podcast, you got to put your own little recipe onto it. You got to put your own little things into the in, in, into the soup. You got to know, hey, this is what works for us. It may not. I don't care if it doesn't work for anybody else. This is what works for us. And having that ability to know, you know, not only what to think but how to think is a huge advantage to individuals who want to stay ahead of everybody else.